Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Fusion Industry Association's channel. My name is Jeff Peachman, and I'm a graduate student here at the University of Washington in Seattle, and I work on flow-stabilized Z-pinches. I'm here to present the Fusion News update for April 19th, 2023. Our first story, new discovery points the way to more compact fusion power plants. Our second, Tokamak Energy unveils images of fusion power plants slated for 2030s. Three, UAH researchers win awards totaling 750K to advance steps towards Holy Grail Fusion Clean Energy Project. Four, investors hold the key to fusion and our clean energy future. And five, our late breaking story, NRC decision separates fusion energy regulation from nuclear fission. I also have two bonus stories for you this week, so stick around until the end if you want to hear about those ones. One, new discovery points the way to more compact fusion power plants. Researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics, also called IPP, have made a discovery that could lead to tokamaks which are more compact and lower cost. They have found that they can reduce the distance between an X-point radiator and a diverter without causing the diverter to melt. Fusion reactions create heavier ions like helium, and these heavy ions are impurities which will reduce fusion reaction rates after those ions are produced. So in a tokamak, these impurities need to be removed while the device is still running. And this is done by allowing the plasma to escape confinement at a point called the X point. And this is where the magnetic field lines actually look like an X. Uh, after it escapes confinement, it hits what's called a diverter, and the diverter removes those particles from the device. However, the plasma is really hot when it escapes confinement, and so if it's not cooled before it reaches the diverter, then it could melt the diverter. So we need a way to reduce the kinetic energy of the plasma before it hits it. One way that this is done is using an X-point radiator. So an X-point radiator is where you inject gases such as nitrogen near the X-point, and the nitrogen mixes with the plasma, and it'll radiate very strongly in UV, in ultraviolet light. And this ultraviolet light goes in all directions, which spreads the energy over a larger surface area, which hopefully prevents your diverter from melting. So until now, the X-point had to be about 25 centimeters away from the diverter to prevent the diverter from melting. Uh, but researchers at IPP found that they could actually reduce this distance to about five centimeters. And they discovered that the X-point radiator was much more efficient than we previously thought. It, it radiated much more energy than we thought in UV light. And this discovery is really important because this allows us to increase the volume of plasma inside of a tokamak and this increases the amount of fusion power we can generate in a device of the same size, meaning that electricity produced by a tokamak could be lower cost. Our second story, Tokamak Energy unveils images of fusion power plants slated for 2030s. FIA member Tokamak Energy has released images of its proposed commercial fusion power plant, which it claims could generate enough electricity to power 50,000 homes in the 2030s. The company plans to build a fusion pilot plant around its upcoming STE-1 tokamak. They aim to demonstrate the ability to deliver electricity to the grid with this device. And that could pave the way to worldwide development of 500 megawatt fusion power plants. Tokamak Energy is developing spherical tokamaks, which are much more compact than traditional designs. And they have lower capital investment and lower operating costs and a smaller footprint. Three, UAH researchers win awards totaling 750K to the advanced steps towards Holy Grail Fusion Clean Energy Project. The University of Alabama in Huntsville, or UAH, has been awarded two research grants totaling $750,000 to collaborate with Los Alamos National Laboratory. And they're researching plasma jet magnetoinertial fusion, or PJMIF. This is actually a really cool approach to fusion where they take dozens of plasma cannons and they arrange them in a sphere and they all shoot towards the center at the exact same time. And at the center, they have a bubble of magnetized plasma, which they call a target. All of the plasma guns, they shoot jets and these jets will merge into a liner around the target. And then this liner gets compressed, which compresses the target to fusion conditions. The Los Alamos researchers have been studying the interaction between the magnetized plasma targets and the high-velocity jets. And they want to understand how the kinetic energy of the jets gets 
transformed into thermal energy uh, inside the target. The UAH researchers have an objective of developing higher velocity plasma jets, which will enable this. And traditional coaxial plasma guns, you know, they could be scaled up to allow this, but that would be really inefficient. So UAH proposes to build independent acceleration stages um, to greatly increase the efficiency while increasing the velocity of the jets. These awards were separately funded by the Department of Energy's established program to stimulate competitive research. And this facilitates collaborations between universities and the national laboratories. Four, investors hold the key to fusion and our clean energy future. Our next story refers to an article in Forbes written by Dr. Melanie Windridge. She is organizing a fusion investment event in London next month called Fusion X Invest. And the article explains her motivations for creating the event. Dr. Windridge argues that accelerating the development of commercial fusion energy will be critical for achieving our climate and energy goals. But in order to accelerate it, we need more private investment. Fortunately, investors are increasingly excited about fusion. For example, Breakthrough Energy Ventures, founded by Bill Gates, has invested in fusion companies like Commonwealth Fusion Systems, Zap Energy, and most recently, Type 1 Energy. But now, in addition to venture capital firms, there are many institutional investors who are getting involved, including insurance companies, sovereign wealth funds, and even pension funds. This indicates that fusion energy investments are becoming much more mainstream than they used to be. However, fusion is a really complex subject, so prospective investors need to learn more about the industry before they're comfortable making an investment. So the purpose of the event, Fusion X Invest, is to make the industry more accessible to investors by providing them with community and relationships. They need insights from both industry insiders and existing investors in fusion companies. So if you're an investor interested in fusion, you should check out the event. And five, our late breaking story for today. NRC decision separates fusion energy regulation from nuclear fission. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission in the United States voted that nuclear fusion will be regulated in a manner similar to particle accelerators and will not be regulated like nuclear fission. This is a very important decision that gives certainty to the many teams working on fusion technology while also protecting the public. And finally, I have the two bonus stories that I promised you. The first is local news from my home city of Seattle, global fusion industry emerging in Seattle's backyard. The second bonus story features FIA member TAE Technologies, who have expressed the possibility of constructing a fusion power plant in the United Kingdom. That's all the fusion news this week. Once again, I'm Jeff Peachman, and thanks for joining me. Please subscribe to the channel for more Fusion news and check out the links in the description.